STV, votre télé. Territorial Administration Minister Paul Atanganji has rubbish report on the denial to pay the first part of money to political parties gone in for the October 7 presidential elections. Get the true story in this newscast. Plus, Professor Maurice Camto has joined his voice to some of his political opponents to settle the Anglophone crisis if elected on October 7, while he also plans to leave the floor open on discussion of the form of state as his top areas in Cameroon. Those are my latest stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and thanks for joining me. I am Henry Wana at the Anchor in Douala. Contrary to recent reports that the Ministry of Territorial Administration denied paying the first quarter of campaign funds to the nine political parties gone in for the October 7 elections, Territorial Administration Minister Paul Tanganji has rubbished the claims during a press conference in Yaoundé today. Let's have an extract. We invited all the political parties involved in the presidential race to come and collect the funds allocated for the purpose. As for now, I can tell you that the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement has already been served. You saw the government delegate who is also the treasurer of the party. The Social Democratic Front has also been served. And the party univers of uh, Cabral Libi, or Professor Kumvondo, because Professor Kumvondo is the founder of the party, and uh, their candidate is Mr. Cabral Libi. So we have three possibilities of paying the money. Either we do a bank, a bank transfer, a bank draft, or we can pay in cash. But it depends on the candidates. We don't impose. We give you three options. If you decide that we have to make a bank transfer, then you go to the bank and give us an attestation from the bank, which gives us all the information about the, you are, you, the bank uh, details, the name of the political party, your bank account number, then we give you the money. Today we have had some discussions, cases which we couldn't really, really take a decision because we had three different personalities who came for the same political party asking the ministry to give them the funds. It becomes a problem if three people have to come asking for. So we asked the leaders of uh, the political party or the candidates to give us an indication as to who is responsible for the transactions. And in that case, he has to give what they call the power of attorney, give you the power of attorney, which clearly tells the Minister of Territorial Administration that this person has been duly assigned to collect the funds for the party. So we have tried as much as possible to be flexible, to respect the law, uh, but at least to respect all the administrative procedures because you can only pay money to somebody who has been officially assigned by the candidate to act on his behalf. We need those clarifications because we have had cases today, as I told you earlier, where we had three or four people coming for the same thing. So at the end of the day, we cannot decide. So we have consulted some of the candidates, telling them that give us a clarification on those you have sent for the purpose. If he's a treasurer, make us an official letter that this is a person who will act on behalf of the party. And immediately we have the information, those who came with no problem, in less than 15 minutes, they had done their transactions and they went away without any problem. So the government intends to respect its fair play the decision of the government, the head of state, we, well, we instructed us that all the candidates should have the funds before the campaign start. See, that is a sign of fair play. 
Minister Paul Atanganji talking there. Professor Maurice Kamto has unveiled his socio-economic and political manifesto for the country should he be elected on October 7, 2018. The Cameroon Renaissance Movement candidate hopes to trigger constitutional reforms that will end the ongoing Anglophone crisis in the country. Peter Sose reports. Maurice Kanto wants to modernize public institutions through constitutional reforms hinged on a federal structure. The system would seek balance of power between the various arms of government, set presidential term limits at two, and reduce the voting age to 18. The Cameroon Renaissance Movement's presidential aspirant wants to strengthen living together by ensuring a mutual recognition of different communities as essential components of the Cameroonian nation. He also wants to adopt an inclusive approach in tackling social problems. Under him, the reform of the judicial system will be completed, notably by settling the question of traditional courts, boosting the independence of the judiciary through a system of the appointment of judges, and creating court systems in places with needs. Defense and security forces will be trained and equipped with regards to judicial police, forensics, economic and financial investigations, as well as general policing. In the economic domain, Maurice come to want to reorganize the National Investment Corporation in order to redefine its mission in the context of globalization. A revision of the state's participation policy in the economy, reshaping of the portfolio of public and parapublic enterprises, reconfiguring the missions of certain public entities such as the SIC and rethinking the role of regulatory agencies. The law on state-owned companies will be revised by reconsidering in particular the methods of appointing general managers and presidents of boards of directors of state-owned enterprises. The development of a realistic strategy for the progressive formalization of the informal sector is also envisaged. Development in technology, agriculture and industries is expected to stimulate the economic growth rate to at least 12% in the next decade. The education and health sectors will have an increased budget to enable them meet contemporary needs as Camto wants to see more women and youth contributing to national Civil society actors want the presidential aspirants of the October 7 polls to take concrete measures that will improve good governance and promote social cohesion. The measures to be taken have been handed to representatives of the different parties in Douala this Wednesday, September the 19th. Peter Sose once more. Civil society actors have observed that the socio-economic and political context surrounding the October 7 presidential elections is indeed tragic and puts the country at crossroads. And the general interest of the population in the face of this menace has been relegated in a stony show of indifference towards their plight. Our country is undergoing a very, very deep crisis and uh, since then we have not been able to, 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 uh, to address, to solve this crisis. To guarantee stability and social cohesion, the Citizen Committee for Transparency and Exercise of Liberties, COSITEL, has outlined a series of reforms on the sovereignty, justice, education, health and social sectors to be undertaken by the winner of the polls. Top on the agenda is the elaboration of a new constitution. Many, many issues we are, which are coming from the days of reunification. And so we didn't address all these issues from uh, uh, 1961. And now we have to change everything to sit down and discuss with our friends. Will it be decentralization? Will it be uh, federalism? but we need to address those issues. In the meantime, government has been challenged to accept the Tumi-led peace initiative or come up with an all-inclusive dialogue option which embraces all shades of opinion in order to water down the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions. Among the contenders for the presidential race, only the SDF and CDU had representatives at the think tank. Political actors have lauded the initiative, but want the measures to reflect the aspiration of all Cameroonians. A feedback of the coastal engagement is expected within a week.
officials in Kumba Meme Division have expressed satisfaction with the response from the population declaring their interest in supervising the upcoming election at police stations despite the security threat in the division. They however call on the population to visit Ilekam branch offices and retrieve their cards before October 7, 2018. Daniel Aneba, Marcel Itoe from Kumba. Despite the little or no interest shown by the population of Meme Division over the upcoming October 7th election, officials of the Meme Divisional branch of Elections Cameroon and Lekam have expressed great satisfaction with the progress made in getting them ready for the upcoming elections. According to Meme Divisional Elecam Communication Head, over 50% of the expected number of persons have applied to be chairpersons of polling stations at the level of Kumba Central. Um, we've been receiving applications for chairpersons of polling stations. And um, so far, if you take, for example, the Kumba 1 um, uh, council branch, we have close to 50% of, um, of people who have applied to be chairpersons for the 49 um, polling stations in the subdivision. So, so far, things are in motion. Um, we are hoping that before the elections, a week before the elections, everything will be 100% um, on point. He regretted the fact that Bonge and Konya subdivisions are yet to react in this light. The communication head further expressed worries over the refusal by voters to come and collect their cards at the various branches in order to know where to vote. We encourage um, voters to, to get their cards so that they, they have the specifics about their polling stations. You know, when you register, you register per polling center, which means that if you are registering, for example, that you are registering in um, Kumbeng, they say you are regional at Kumbambe and polling station, um, polling center. But to know exactly whether it is polling station A, B, or C, you need your card. With members of the Divisional Electoral Commission made up of the representatives of political of Information Day. During today's event in Douala, the actors exchanged on ideas that could help beef up their activities. Darlene Feje reports. Limited access to finance, markets, and information are some of the major challenges of small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon. People create enterprises to sell and end up closing their companies because they don't have access to markets. Also, for an enterprise to develop itself, finance is highly needed. To achieve its objectives of becoming the reference in supporting SMEs in the country, the Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Promotion Agency has put in place a series of activities to support SMEs in the creation of enterprises, the development of existing ones, and to provide support in the implementation of an information system for SMEs. The Information Day in Douala this 19th of September was a platform to popularize the missions, programs, and projects of the agency. During the past three years, we have designed projects and programs to address the issues related to the promotion of small and medium-sized enterprises. The second edition of the Information Day comes after the maiden edition in April 2018 in Yaoundé. Activities leading to the 39th edition of World Tourism Day in the Littoral Region have been launched today. Focus this year is on tourism and digital transformation. Thierry Kinunana, Secretary General at the Littoral Governor's Office, who chaired today's launch, urged stakeholders of the sector to make effective use of digital technology to enhance their activities. Darlene Feje, once more. The importance of digital technologies in tourism and the opportunities of innovation in the sector through artificial intelligence and digital platforms is at the center of World Tourism Day 2018. Launching activities in prelude to the celebration of the 39th edition of World Tourism Day come September 27, the Secretary General at the Governor's Office urged operators in the sector to improve and diversify offers of digital technology. What we have recommended to the operators of the sector is that they have to invest also in the sector of uh, technology, the new technology, the ITCs, uh, because uh, it has been proven and, uh, in, and it is having a demonstration every day that uh, the new technologies uh, enable uh, people uh, to reach uh, their target 
and knowing that uh, the sector of tourism is uh, is uh, is like a cornerstone of the economy and of, uh, those. The Little Wa region is blessed with diverse touristic sites, but some are yet to be discovered and others neglected. Most of the touristic sites in the Little Wa region are in enclave areas, and they are not very accessible. Some measures are, however, being taken by authorities to improve the exploitation of these sites. At this level, to improve, to develop, and to vulgarize the touristic culture, and to promote at the level, at the right level, all the touristic sites. We cannot do it on one day. We are going progressively, and uh, the results are... Open door days, training workshops to reinforce the capacities of stakeholders and other cultural exercises are on the agenda of the week-long activities. The Northwest population have been left in a state of confusion following the release of a communique signed by their regional de the regional delegate of transport, Chair Guy Ngong, which circulated on the social media last Tuesday, banning mass exodus of the population without any convincing reason. According to the transport boss, the communique is fake. Love and Bear reports. A certain communique reportedly issued and signed by the Northwest Regional Delegate for Transport has sparked controversies on social media following another communique released a day after, contrary to the first communique signed by the same authority. The first communique issued on September 18 saw its roots from the recent mass exodus the town of Bamenda has experienced these past days. According to the September 18 communique, measures have been taken to protect persons traveling out of the region as they shall henceforth be required to provide additional information at their point of departure, therefore they shall be expected to state the reason for their departure, the name of the receiver, and his or her contact. Anyone who will not comply to this will have his or her journey cancelled. The population of the Northwest region received this communique with mixed feelings, as many wonder why the administration has taken such drastic measures to prevent people from leaving the region. The impact of this communique could be felt in travel agencies, as they are no longer crowded as before. Another communique still bearing the signature of the Northwest Regional Delegate for Transport has been released, terming the September 18 communique fake. In this new communique issued on September 19, the delegate writes, the press release published on social media on the 18th of September 2018 and purportedly signed by the Delegate for Transport for the Northwest is fake and unfounded. This scenario is not the first in the Northwest region since the start of the ongoing Anglophone crisis as some administrators in the region have dealt with this same issue. The two communiques have left the population in a tight corner as they do not know who to believe anymore. The constant parkett in the town of Mehmet Vision is threatening economic operators whose businesses depend slowly on electricity to operate. As Daniela Neba reports, most of such business operators are leaving Kumba for nearby cities. Her report. Most businesses which solely depend on electricity to operate are at the verge of closing down and transferring to other towns as a result of persistent electricity outage that has moved from these to almost a week without power in Kumba. Generator repairers and operators of the latest and fast growing business of charging phones using a generator have on their part considered the ongoing electricity problem a blessing since their services are of high demand. The electricity situation has kept many worried since the start of heavy confrontations along the Kumba Boya Road as a result of the ongoing crisis. The gun battles along that stretch of road has been held responsible of the persistent electricity problems faced in the city. The persistent power outage has greatly affected the economy of the town as most businesses which solely depend on electricity supply have resorted to the use of generators in order to operate. Let's now talk health in this newscast. The population of the southwest region have been advised to apply proper hygiene in order to avoid the spread of cholera outbreak. The call was made recently during a seminar in Boya, which was organized by the regional delegation of public health. Clarice Ekoe reports from Boya. 
As the Southwest region continues to experience mass movement of its population to and fro, given the current insecurity challenges plaguing the region and the current outbreak of cholera in some parts of the country, this working session which brought together regional delegates, mayors, security and defense forces was to chat with on how to prevent and fight against cholera in the Southwest region, which has recorded 251 suspected cases, including 20 deaths as of September 2018 statistics on cholera outbreak in Cameroon as disclosed by Dr. Victor Mbume, Southwest Regional Delegates for Public Health. Because of past experiences, especially 2010-2011, when we had 3,111 registered and confirmed cases in the Southwest, and during which we lost 33, we must work hard to prevent cholera from uh, coming into the southwest because of the dangers it presents. Contaminated food or water, the absence of proper sanitation amongst others, were highlighted as some risk factors of cholera which could affect the vulnerable population including the internally displaced persons, the military and children. Individually you must wash your hands before you go uh, to have a meal you must wash your hands when you leave the toilet. You must make sure that um, you wash the fruits you want to eat. Your food should be properly cooked. Now, if you're not sure of your drinking water, then make sure that you can, make, you can improve the water by disinfecting the water. On his part, the chief commander of the region, Bernard Okala Bilai, who chaired the meeting, called on all stakeholders to actively involve in the fight against cholera by getting rid of poorly disposed roadside garbage, sensitize the population. Meanwhile, health authorities have prescribed utmost hygiene while calling on the population to report any suspected case of cholera to the nearest health district. Okay. Let's now get those out of Cameroon with the VOA. Time for fun and games. We're seeing a continual uptick in customers that we're bringing in. A sign that consumers have a little more to spend here in Fargo, North Dakota. It's a small business of bad rumors. When the economy is doing better, they're, they're able to spend more on entertainment and fun. And that means more stores are hiring. It's a very competitive market. Um, there's, there's a lot of jobs being offered out there, especially in the retail sectors. Nationwide, unemployment rates are falling. North Dakota's 2.4 percent is tied for second lowest among any state. And people are spending, says one waitress who has noticed an increase in her tips. I've never done better myself, so... But outside the big city, President Trump's tariffs are causing anxiety for small business owners. It's very scary right now. I, I can see where a lot of farmers don't want to spend money at this time. Farm families from all over North Dakota shop here, and business is good. But with a farm of her own in addition to the store, Mary Lee Nielsen wants President Trump to back off on tariffs that could hurt North Dakota farmers. It's a double hit for us with a store and a farm, so uh, it's scary. And with the U.S. and China in the midst of a trade war, soybean farmer Monty Peterson says losing the Chinese market will have an immediate impact. Crop that doesn't get delivered to market doesn't generate income. The economy looms large here less than two months before the midterms, especially with the U.S. Senate race so close between Senator Heidi Heidkamp. We have an economy in this country where the urban de economy depends on the rural economy. How are you guys? And her challenger, Congressman Kevin Kramer, who hears farmers' concerns about tariffs. What I tell them is good news, you know, good news is coming. We need to look for the good news. We push the administration on a regular basis. Like Republican candidates across the country, Kramer is running on a strong economy and the benefits of the 2017 tax cut bill. We're the optimists in this country. While that bill gave North Dakota voters the highest average tax cut of any state, many lower and middle class workers say they're not feeling it. It all goes to daycare or a mortgage or out the window anyway. So, but no, I haven't uh, seen enough of a difference. Unlike big corporations and oil companies like Credence Energy, which have enjoyed a windfall from Republican tax cuts, 
in a strong economy. What we've seen is just this multiplication effect of more people eager to invest in our industry in this area, and as, as, a, as a result, uh, we see a multiply for, multiplier force across the economy that everybody's growing. One struggling worker agrees. I think he's taken some, some pretty good strides in, in uh, uh, straightening things out, like, like uh, bringing our jobs back over here yeah. where they belong. But will that slowly approving economy be enough to bring voters out to the polls? That's the question this November. <laughs> Catherine Gibson, VOA News, Fargo, North Dakota. We now take spot in brief before we take leave of you. Construction work at the 60,000 capacity Olympic Stadium in Yaoundé to host the 2019 AFCOM is gradually taking shape according to the company in charge of the project. The facts were presented to Sport and Physical Education Minister Pierre Ismail Bidungpat while on a working visit to the construction site this Wednesday. The company has equally promised to deliver the project by December 2018. And that does it for today's English Panther Newscast on Spectrum Television. Thank you all for watching. See you tomorrow. Good night. STV, votre télé.